How's it going everyone? My name is Derek Afasi. I'm the owner of Afasi Financial Group. In today's topic, I want to discuss with you retirement questions and some of the most pressing retirement questions that I get on a daily basis um, or that I've seen uh, cl you know, basically clients ask and, and want to know the answers to so that they can make sure that they're confident in their retirement planning, um, you know, dependent upon whatever their goals are. So what happens is a lot of people, they try to overcomplicate, you know, the, these questions, they try to overcomplicate their situation where it could just be answered in some three basic questions, making sure what you're currently doing um, is either going to be the correct choice or is not going to be the correct choice. Or you might have a portion of it, you know, set up correctly and, and a, a, there might be a gap in another portion. So when I talk about these things, you know, understand how does it pertain to you? Are you, you know, is your mindset very similar to the clients that I deal with on a daily basis to see whether or not this may help, you know, your specific need or not? So the number one question that we get is, you know, how to prevent losses to your retirement accounts. And when you think about this, you have to think of your money. So this could be your cash monies, these could be your retirement account monies, whatever that is, you have to think of it kind of like a bucket. Okay, this bucket is going to stay with you for the rest of your life. This bucket is what you're going to have to rely on for that retirement income, uh, either later on or or at least money that you could always pull on to, you know, whether that's to live every day or whether that's to take a vacation, whatever that is in your retirement. So this bucket is going to be so sacred that you do not want this bucket having nothing in it or, you know, going, you know, going, going to the wayside, uh, you know, basically having no more dollars in it. So if you kind of think of your accounts like these, you know, little micro buckets, what are the negatives? What are the little holes that are being poked in the bottom of this bucket? And the number one answer is going to be fees, right? So if you go and you have this bucket and you understand, okay, you want to tie this bucket to some sort of mutual funds. Well, if you do that, the amount of money that you're placing into that bucket is already going to be hindered with some sorts of mutual fund related fees. So it's not so much how much money you place into that bucket, but it goes by making sure that your account performance, so that's the other thing, your percentage gain that you're receiving off of that bucket is going to be in a positive direction. Because if you're going and you're placing more and more dollars into that bucket, but yet that is associated, the mutual funds are associated in some sort of downward market loss, well then obviously your bucket is going to be smaller and smaller and smaller at the end of the day, at the end of the year. So the number one thing is you want to make sure that this is at least going to be something powerful, something that you could get that power of compound interest in a positive direction rather than see that bucket slowly get depleted, 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 even though you keep throwing money at that bucket or money inside of that bucket, you know, you have to make sure that you are at least stopping that bleeding, uh, you know, with those mutual fund related fees or another example would be an advisor fee. One of the examples that I always use, I say in 2008, the average portfolio, average retirement portfolio has lost 57 percent. So these were portfolios that were set up through wealth accumulation specialists, through certain financial advisors that said, hey, listen, you know, based upon your risk tolerance, this would be my recommendation. And it wasn't something that they did wrong. It was just the market when the market wants to have a shift, the market's going to have a shift. And unfortunately, these individuals that were throwing dollars into their retirement buckets, maybe this might have been their 401k accounts or their IRA accounts or whatever that is, they've seen growth in you know the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s. And then right when that, that shift took place in 2008, these individuals were looking to possibly retire or were thinking, hey, I'm gonna, I only have a couple of years left because the market has been an uphill climb that I should be able to retire shortly and then when the market had that shift they got surprised with saying okay well the market didn't only go down but on top of it I also had to pay mutual fund related fees into my account and then I also had to pay my advisor a fee even though I lost 57% of my portfolio now some portfolios did better than 57% loss some of them did a lot worse than 57% loss. So it all kind of depends upon that situation. But at the end of the day, there's certain ways on how you could prevent that bucket, prevent those fees from happening, making sure that you're only gaining with the power of compound interest in a positive direction. So whether you have certain things in you know cash accounts, Roth IRA accounts, IRA accounts, 401k accounts, 
depending upon your specific situation, there's ways that you could roll over those accounts into specifically designed type of retirement accounts, making sure that you're eliminating those mutual fund related fees, you're eliminating those advisor fees. Most importantly, you're eliminating that downward market loss so that every single year, if the market goes up, you'll receive a slight gain into your account. If the market goes down, then you're going to receive a gain of 0% into your account. So you're going to at least prevent all those negatives from coming out. You're going to stop the bleeding off of your bucket to make sure that you could have that power of compound interest in a positive direction you know, at all times. And that's that's kind of what's what's going on is it's interest on top of interest on top of interest on top of interest. So when you're doing that throughout a long duration of time or you're just doing it um, right when you know, okay, my, my sweet spot for retirements might be three years, it might be seven years, it might be 15 years, whatever that is, you're at least taking the precautionary measures now to make sure, okay, I'll at least gain something. Whenever the market goes up, I'll at least have some good consistent gains with that account. But when that market goes down, I'm not losing anything you know, into my bucket, into my retirement bucket, and you're able to now have this retirement bucket last you for a long length of time. So that takes care of the first retirement question is you just have to understand what are the negatives that are coming out of your retirement accounts? You know, how, how are there ways on how you could prevent those negatives from occurring? And there are specifically designed contracts to set those up. And, you know, at any point in time, if, if, you know, what I'm saying is triggering anything in your brain to say, hey, listen, you know, I'm interested in, in knowing exactly what these secrets are. That's what we have our 800 number for. It's 1-800-566-1002. We deal with many states. We deal on a national basis. So because of the volume that we bring in, um, it was about a little over a year ago, I want to say it was a year and a half ago, we implemented the 24-7 customer service, meaning that you give us a call at any time and there's going to be a specialist standing by to at least answer your call. So that could be you know, nights, uh, mornings, nights, weekends, holidays, whatever that is. We'll always have somebody on, you know, on site to make sure that we're answering your calls so that you could be most comfortable with your exact position. Now, the secondary question is how to not outlive your money. And this is something that a lot of individuals have to look at, you know, how are ways that you could receive that confidence of retirement? And typically it comes to, you know, retirement income, lifetime income, how, you know, what are you receiving to make sure that it's as if you're getting a retirement paycheck every single year? So the number one answer is Social Security. A lot of times people utilize Social Security. They say, okay, I'm 62, I'm going to take a reduced benefit of Social Security, or I'm going to wait till 66 and two thirds, or you know I'm going to wait till age 70. So understand the way that Social Security comes out is if you someone takes that money at age 62, that's going to be a more reduced benefit than if they wait till age 66, which is going to be a further reduced benefit than if they wait till age 70. So if you understand that concept, you could say, okay, well I could either work those couple of years, or I could take money from my retirement accounts to at least supplement those additional monies of Social Security income. You have to think of Social Security income as a as an asset. A lot of people just think, oh, it's income. You know, I, I place my money in there. Yes, but when you're going and let's say you're getting paid fifty, sixty thousand dollars from, uh, you know, fifty grand from Social Security, and that's happening every single year, and now you're ten years deep into getting that money. That's a five hundred thousand dollar bucket. So one. Once again, just like that bucket theory, you have to think of this income as essentially as a bucket. Now, some other individuals are very fortunate. They might have been offered a pension, you know, a pension plan through work. Now, that's not as common as it was, you know, in the past. And I always use the example. My grandfather was an elevator mechanic for the city of New York. He worked X amount of years for New York City. And, you know, after X amount of years, he was able to retire in his 50s. Um, and he was offered a sort of pension program. So at that point in time, he said I could either take a single life only option, which would only cover his life, but would be an income stream that would last him for the rest of his life or him and my grandmother's life. And he chose option B. And I make a joke about that a lot of times because of the fact that my he was going to choose option A with the single life only option. And then my grandmother basically found out and, you know, basically had a fit and it was a good thing because he ended up dying at age 69 and she ended up uh, passing away in her late 80s so that income was still able to cover them for both now the pension program unfortunately has really gone by the wayside where now employee uh, employers rather than them saying hey listen we're going to give you a sort of benefit for working for this company 
Now they're just saying, hey, listen, be happy that you have a job with how the economy you know, currently is and how employment is currently. So what they're doing is they're saying rather than us take on the risk, and that's essentially what a defined benefit is, is a def they're defining what your benefit would be at retirement. They're now saying it has to be a defined contribution plan, such as the 401k, such as the 403bs, the you know TSP options, different things like that. So what they're doing is they're now they're saying, okay, well, create your own retirement bucket, you know, deal with your own type of risk, find your own advisor, and hopefully, you know, you could you could retire properly. And that's that's kind of where the where the uh, where the problems have lied with these types of retirement accounts. Because what happens is individuals, they might have these types of 401k buckets that are accumulating, 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 or they're they're getting a gain one year, a loss the next, a gain one year, the loss the next, and then right when it comes time to retire, they don't know how to properly take that money. So when we use the example of the prevent downward losses or prevent losses to your retirement accounts, if you're paying fees on something, you're paying mutual fund related fees, you're paying advisor fees, you have that downward market loss potential. And then on top of it, you're pulling out money from that bucket for income, and you don't know how much money to pull out properly. Obviously, that's a problem. You know, so you want to make sure that you're setting up a proper retirement income plan that could help supplement the Social Security income or the Social Security income and also the pension income. One of the reasons I always say is, you don't want to, when you set up a retirement income plan, you just want to make sure that you, that you have certainty in that uncertain world. So if you're going and let's say you and your spouse are receiving $50,000 a year for social security income, maybe you're receiving another $30,000 a year from pension income, but you need to have $100,000 per year to live for income, well, then you understand that there's going to be a specific gap of $20,000 you know, every single year. Well, if you have $500,000, $400,000 in your retirement accounts, it's not going to take that much money to correlate it directly to your plan. What you want to do is take the smallest amount of dollars possible, place it into a type of guaranteed insurance contract or something that would provide that sort of uh, pension income, but more on a personal pension side to at least bridge that gap to make sure that you could now you know, spend your retirement dollars with confidence. You at least have that portion, maybe at that five hundred thousand dollar retirement account. Maybe it's only going to cost you two hundred grand to do that. You know, to to uh, at least accomplish that twenty thousand dollar goal, and therefore you now have three hundred thousand dollars that you could risk. You could you know have in in different types of cash accounts or different types of safe accounts, liquid accounts, so that you could take that vacation year by year, whatever that is. But what you're doing is you're setting up the plan in a very specific way to make sure that there are no hiccups, to make sure you're more and more confident at the end of the day. And that's what kind of leads into this next question. Say how to know if my current if your current plan is correct. Well, you just want to make sure that you're that you're covering your bases from all angles. So, you know, is this a concrete plan? Are the types of accounts that you're in right now, does it have that safety net saying that if the market goes down, your entire retirement is not wiped out? You know, wh where are you making sure that you do have that safety blanket, you do have that safety net set up? You know, what, what is that safety? How safe are these, are these contracts that you're in? You know, whether you're in a 401k and then you're rolling it over into an IRA account, how is the IRA account designed properly? If you have a, your money sitting in cash accounts, is that cash, are you trying to throw that into the stock market? Are you trying to just gamble with that cash? You know, what are you trying to do, you know, with those types of things? Always think of what is the absolute worst case scenario and and that's how you have to do your planning. You have to make sure that everything is, is, is set up properly, everything is concrete, everything is certain, so that everything left over, that's the money that you could risk. That's the money that you could now have fun with. And, uh, you know, and, and that's the way that you live those retirement years with confidence. The other thing is also with these types of plans, whenever you set up a type of retirement plan, or one of the things that we pride ourselves on is we try to make sure that all the bases are covered, meaning that even as you're living, maybe you might come into some sort of long-term care situation. You know, you might, the longer that you live, um, you know, when you don't die, you live. When you live, you become frail. And hence, why so many people are, you know, why there's so many more claims on long-term care expenses. So there's certain products that have hybrid type blends that provide you at no cost certain extra long-term care benefits that say, well, rather than dip into your cash accounts because you didn't foresee, you know, yourself getting sick or getting frail, whatever that what, that case may be, well, rather than use your cash accounts, which were kind of used as your fund money, now you could go and leverage these existing accounts that you already set up because there's some added long-term care benefits on top of it. So that's how you do an ultimate plan to make sure that that bucket 
has that lid over it and then you also have certain guards certain protections around that bucket to make sure that you could live those dollars with you could live those years with confidence you can make sure that you're spending your, your your retirement dollars exactly how you deem fit whether that's taking vacations taking care of grandchildren traveling the world whatever that is you know there are ways on how you can make that possible. You just have to, you know, tread lightly on the situation. You have to make sure that you are educated on the situation. And, you know, and that's one of the things that we, that we really pride ourselves in helping individuals out. We have something known as the retire sharp planning system, which makes us very unique because we have proprietary strategies and contracts that are set up all throughout the nation. So depending upon your specific area, there's going to be a need, a different type of need for somebody who's age 55, as opposed to somebody who's age 67. You know, what this 55 year old wants to have in retirement, whether they want to retire early or later, or this person that's age 67, vice versa, you know, there has to be specific niche criteria met to make sure that that plan is set up properly. So that's what we do with the retire sharp planning system. No other company has that, you know, in house. And this is also one of the reasons whenever you call into the office, you're going to be dealing with a specialist. That specialist is going to be asking you a slew of questions to get you more comfortable and try to help you understand, you know, what your current situation is and whether or not there may be a problem there. If there is a problem, there are certain ways to supplement that problem. Make sure that you're set up properly. Make sure that you're you're doing your planning properly. That might be certain products, certain types of IRA contracts that you could then you know roll over into those specific specifically designed IRA contracts, but just understand each, it's going to go by a case by case basis. So once again, give our 1-800 number a call. It's 1-800-566-1002. We are A plus rated on the Better Business Bureau. We've never had, we've always had very good reviews. We've never had any complaints and it's because of this methodical process. Um, I want to thank you very much for watching this video and we look forward to speaking with you. Thank you so much.